um, there are many questions that arise from that. For example, um, you know, what is, um, you know, we're, we're, what are some of our goals? Is there an afterlife? Uh, you know, how do I live? You know, do I be, become virtuous? You know, for example, have morals? You know, is that um, you know, is that my purpose to become having good morals? Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the main things is let's go on. So, in terms of philosophy, the reason why we go and pursue in philosophy is to understand nature. Within that, we took a, a look at metaphysics. Metaphysics is, is what reality is really is. What is reality? Within that subject is ontology. Ontology means uh, the study of existence, what exists. And even within that is teleology. What teleology means is that what is the end purpose of some, f uh, or the goal of an organism is. So that's where we're framing the question. Aristotle basically said to, the best way to understand uh, you know, um, a thing is to understand what his purpose was intended to do. Okay, here's Maslow's hierarchy. Basically, this means that there's different types of needs and your needs change uh, in terms of your hierarchy. So basically, you've got uh, physiological needs. It's the body. You know, is your body working, active? You know, are you healthy? Safety needs is, for example, do you have um, security? You know, uh, you know, for example, in Pakistan, you'll have you know, the bombs exploding, is that satisfied? You know, are you safe in this environment? If you're not safe, then you're not going to go to any of the further ones. You understand? If these basic needs are not met, you can't go to your other type of needs. Um, then you've got self, uh, like social belonging, like you've got friends, you know, uh, friendship. Other ones are self, um, self-esteem, with that means that you, you have the ego, you know, um, means that I want to do something, I want to achieve something. Again, I can mention in Pakistan, you know, compared to the West, where, you know, uh, in the West you have, for example, you go, go to whatever limits you like. Here it's a lot limited, like your education, your things, where, you know, like the system is stopping you. So you can't actually go further than that. Then there's uh, like self actualization where you've got like sports people that you know really excel in terms of sports technology uh, you know uh, to the full capacity finally maslow wrote more recently uh, you know near, near his end of life is called transcendence transcendence means basically going beyond oneself so what that means is like altruism um altruistic is means that you help someone but you get no benefit physically from that help why would you help someone so this is how it works, and we're going to examine now uh, some of the uh, parts. So again, I've said something. So in terms of um, ancient Greek philosophy, we go to Platonism. What they say the ultimate values are is to do good. So he says, um, uh, for example, highest form of knowledge. So f uh, to gain the ultimate knowledge or gain knowledge is the best ultimate thing to do from their point of view. Um, Aristotle said, uh, yes, that's fine, but you should be moral. Moral means to, to do good, uh, good things. Uh, have self-control, self-things. Uh, cynicism, uh, he was, uh, actually said, you know, to do good, but he must agree to nature. For example, the natural world, you shouldn't harm people. That, that is moralistic, like, rather than being abstract. Um, then we come to, for example, uh, cryonism, where it says the ultimate um, aim for man is basically pleasure and not having pain. So basically what that means is that uh, you should do, pursue happiness, you know, become happy with whatever you like, enjoy. That's your ultimate aim. Uh, then the, we got, like in the West, we got hedonism. You see that hedonism, or, or you see, like, for example, rich people. You know, they have their lavish cars. You know, they enjoy their parties. You know, that's hedonism, where they're having ultimate pleasure. That's all they enjoy. You know, they don't, they don't care about helping anybody else. It's self-internal, yeah? So um, that's where hedonism comes in. 
Epicureanism is basically saying, um, arose where they said, don't have too much pleasure. Yeah, you should have basic pleasure, not too much. So, you know, restrict your pleasure. Stoicism said, again, um, don't use too much emotions. Don't get emotional with anything so much that it overtakes your life. You know, like, for example, you might love someone, don't love them too much. You know, it ruins your life. Right. We come now to enlightenment, enlightenment philosophy, where they moved away, enlightenment philosophy, this is in Europe, basically, they moved away from, um, you know, the self, and they said more about society. They were thinking about equality of society. So if society gains uh, freedoms, uh, it can uh, for also, if a society is able to, or people are able to learn, gain knowledge as a whole, that's where they moved on to. Um, you've got different parts like Kantism. He said, the ultimate aim is not to actually worry about what the ultimate cause you're going to uh, have. It's just the actions. Do the actions. Don't worry about uh, what the consequences could be, which is quite dangerous, I would say. You know? <laughs> but you never know. Yeah. Um, let's go more. I'm not going to talk about you to reason. Okay, now um, in Europe, other philosophies arose where we go like pragmatism. What they say, there is actually no God. Yeah. All you have to do is worry about yourself. So uh, look at your life and pursue whatever you want. You know, if you want to actually um, uh, pursue, um, you know, reading, arts, uh, cinema, that's your ultimate aim. That's all it should be. You, know, you make your own aims up. There's, uh, there's no one telling you what to do. Like we have a God and it says, you know, you must do this. They don't have one. They say, do whatever you pursue. Um, I'll m mention the most interesting. Absurdism, again, is saying there's no real God. Um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you yourself make uh, the judgment of what is life outside is meaningless. You know, for example, look, if you look at Pakistan, you see the random events. I mean, just imagine the traffic. Yeah, would you survive going back tonight? You know, it's so random that even if you do good, that suddenly you have a car accident and you're gone. Yeah, so the thing is, they're saying this universe is totally absurd. Yeah, that even if you do good, you might not survive. You don't know what the consequences are. It's so random. You see that outside all the time. There is no order. You know. Finally, you got nihilism. Nihilism says, uh, in terms of philosophy, that there's no real truth. So this is against, you know, like basically, not like what we talk about in the Quran. But they go that there's no truth in the real world. They think that, yeah, that when you try to identify what truth is, there is no real truth. So everything, you can do what you like. So there's no objective meaning. Objective meaning means that when you look in nature, you know, outside, does it tell you what your purpose is? I don't think so. I've not found that. It's out there, you know, it's up to you what you make it. Uh, we'll go on quickly to um, humanism uh, or atheism, basically. Um, I've, I've touched on that. Basically, you define your own values. No one else tells you these are the values, they're strict. You may, but their problem, you can see what arises here, is that each person has a different moral standing. There's no standard. You know, some would say this is good. You know, that's what happens. That's the limitations of atheism. Again, um, humanism came in from atheism and said, no, we should have some standards and basically we should help um, other humans. So welfare for humans, they, which they do. You know, we've got, well, in, for example, which Imran Khan is doing, which I have to say is political, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that, um, um, for example, he's trying to bring in a social society where everyone, uh, you know, the poorest are helped. You know, the young are taught education like we have in the West. So that's a bit of humanism, and it's not about me, myself. Okay, uh, let's go to gene theory. One of the uh, main oppon uh, proponents of this is Richard Dawkins. I, I think you've probably seen him. Yeah, basically what he says is that genes, if you understand genes, for example, uh, genes might be um, 
are like parts of DNA. So you got parts of DNA. So in the population, so different people, they could also have your genes. It's not you, you, your own genes, but your children, your cousins, or someone else could have similar genes. So what genes do is basically called a selfish gene. What that means is that how biology works is that it tries to help itself, yeah, yourself, but any other genes that are similar to it. So that's what it says. Um, its ultimate purpose is to propagate, to so have children, have families, e expand yourself and live forever. That's all its purpose is. Um, we're going to some religions. For example, looking at quickly, this is Judaism. Now, Judaism, Christianity and Islam are almost very similar in terms of purpose. They have a book, you know, Torah for Jews, um, um, you know, Bible for the Christians and Quran for the Muslims. They normally have a set of laws, moral laws, and what they do is basically say, follow those laws. If you follow those laws, worship God. One of the main things is to worship God. You eventually, if you do that and accept that psychologically, you go to heaven and you with God, basically. So that's what it is, uh, Christianity. I, I'm skipping that because I've got a few minutes. All right, um, Sufism. If you just go briefly of what Sufism, ultimate aim, what they try to do is to say there's no real materialism in this world. So it's not materialistic. And also what it tries to do is get rid of the ego. Ego is yourself. What that means is that uh, me, I, that's the ego. What they try to do in Sufism uh, is to get rid of this um, I. Once you achieve that, they say that you can join God. That's the ultimate aim. To go, be friends with God, love God. So you see, for example, uh, Rumi, you know, we all heard about Rumi and he's always talking about love, love of God. And what they try to do is to achieve love of God on this planet here, on earth, before they go to heaven. Yeah. So they try to get, that's the ultimate aim, to love God. So you see them meditating. Why they meditate for so long is because they're trying to love God, um, you know, access God and love him. Similarly, you've got Kabbalism. I, uh, if you heard of Kabbalism, it's a Jewish sect. And I think Sufism also arises from Kabbalism. And what they do is basically, uh, their main thing is, again, overcome the ego. Very similar to Sufism. Uh, but they say, again, w what your ultimate thing is, is that all your knowledge actually comes internally from yourself. So basically, all you, if you have a problem, instead of looking outside how to solve it, you go inwards and the energy should come from within or God's spirituality and help you to overcome that problem. So you have immense powers within yourself. And their main thing is to ultimately join the creator. Okay. We quickly go over a bit of uh, East Asian religions. Moshism, which means that benefit for all. In terms of that, it means that, uh, for example, you have your child or some stranger, you should love them equally. Which sounds a bit absurd, you know, like, you should invite a stranger straight into your house and, you know, and ignore your children or, you know, but they have that. So, you know, Confucianism came in later and said, no, 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 There's, uh, there should be some hierarchy. You know, loving your children is more important than loving a stranger. Um, also, in terms of, um, most of these religions, what they do is what they call yin yang. So if you look at that, the yin yang, we've got the same concept, battle and hawk. It seems to be with all, all these religions or even non-religions, there seems to be, um, if you look at it broadly, it's basically there's a good evil, dark light battle going on. And we've got to actually uh, weave our way through daily lives forever through this uh, good and evil. You can say dark light. So most of these religions, we're talking about Christianity, Judaism, you know, Eastern religions, when you look at it collectively, they're trying to battle uh, or you know, go through life, through your purpose, basically, to avoid being, uh, you know, doing wrong. Uh, you've got a bit of Taoism. Uh, it says, you know, again, moral life, if you've got moral life. Shinto, self-development, you know, and to stay on this planet as long as possible. Uh, Buddhism is actually not a religion in terms of uh, is a religion, but it doesn't have any like a god out there. So you know you might think they have a god, they don't worship a god, 
but their one is again what we have a problem is we suffer you know throughout life if you look at it everyone's got some sort of problem at some time problems arise uh, all the time you know and their main thing is how we can stop that suffering yeah that's their ultimate aim and the main thing is once uh, it's called basically nirvana very similar to uh, hinduism where it says karma they reach karma what it is is exit this universe eventually if you do good develop yourself like a, you know it's very similar like um, yeah, developing the self doing good morals thing you eventually exit the universe so hinduism and buddhism basically all again preach that uh, to do good do moral values and exit so you don't come back to this world there's different ways in buddhism basically you transform from one person to another in hinduism you transfer if you're good then you go up the chain if you're bad you become an animal uh, a lesser animal again jainism and sikhism again um, in jainism is basically self-development so what we said developing the self even though we see them uh, you know worshiping that but the ultimate aim is to develop the self somehow the self seems very important to most religions uh, you know to develop even non-religions you know developing the self so uh, again ego in Sikhism is basically um, to you know lose the ego so it's important to always lose the ego in most of these religions so the ego is the self somehow you think it's me I and all these religions say no 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 it's not I you gotta leave that behind and then you can go to the infinite okay in terms of purpose of life we looked at uh, here's some purposes you know to have leave a legacy means that you achieve something uh, love others be happy be creative make a positive difference um, rule the world you know some people rule the world purpose and some people have there's no meaning you know so you got a bit of both you got no meaning to achieving everything here's some other one survival for example, you know, in Pakistan, you're probably doing survival a lot, you know, living from day to day, you know, Manga Yogi, yeah, so, you know, Ki Kari, yeah, yeah, um, here, another thing that's important in Pakistan, replicate, but you know, when you get married, um, otherwise, uh, in, in the West, it's more like loving people, it's all about love, so different, so what, in terms of concluding, I'll, I'll conclude, basically, there's different purposes from having no purpose to having many purposes but it depends on the person themselves and i think what it is the real message is you have to find your own purpose so what is your purpose really thank you very much